Zorinth clawed his way out of the smoldering command module, his limbs trembling with rage and exhaustion. He scanned the bleak, pockmarked surface of Earth's moon with all four of his eye stalks. The crash had carved a fresh crater into the ancient regolith, blackened chunks of his flagship, biotender scattered around it. Wisps of acrid smoke curled from the rubble, all that remained of the once mighty fleet flagship. This barren wasteland would have to serve as the base from which Zorinth enacted his vengeance against the humans. He struggled to calm the three hearts hammering within the emerald carapace of his thorax. The pain throbbing through his fractured left appendage was insignificant compared to the indignity and humiliation the humans had inflicted. Zorinth recalled with vivid fury the moments before catastrophic impact, the punishing hail of plasma bolts erupting from the surface as the hidden defense system sprung their trap, the bone-juddering explosions ripping through the biotender's hull as Madam President Chandra mocked him over the comm link. How he had desperately flung the mortally wounded ship into a steep lunar orbit seconds before the life support systems failed completely. He now had confirmation that Chandra and other key leaders had survived the initial orbital bombardment, safely ensconced in the buried bunkers and secret bases his intelligence had failed to uncover. Even with their cities in ruins, the humans clung stubbornly to life and defiance. Cockroaches. Zorinth thought bitterly. Step by careful step on the low-gravity surface, Zorinth made his way to the blackened stump of the command tower. He activated his communicator and hailed his second-in-command left in charge of the decimated Alliance fleet. Status report, Zorinth demanded, fighting to keep the venom and despair from his voice. The intermittent response told a dire story. The humans' confounded plasma shields had repelled even the most sustained heavy barrage. Casualties were catastrophic. Of the once 200-strong invasion force, only 43 ships remained battle-ready. Zorinth tightened his remaining undamaged appendages into fists. So the humans thought they could withstand the full might of the Alliance. He would teach them otherwise. The names of his slain crew echoed in his mind fueling a pulsing determination. Before this war was over, human losses would be a thousand times more grievous. Zorinth swore it on the graves of his ancestors. President Chandra strode confidently through the frenetic construction site that was once the Houston Space Command Complex. The sprawling campus lay in ruins, entire buildings reduced to blackened rubble by the initial alien bombardment but human ingenuity was already restoring order from the chaos. Work crews in exosuits lifted massive steel beams while others operated cranes and welding torches at a feverish pace. Chandra allowed herself a thin smile at the progress. The prototype ARC-170 plasma shields had exceeded even her optimistic expectations in repelling the invaders and deep within secure bunkers beneath the Rocky Mountains, her top scientists were already developing the next generation of photon vortex cannons using knowledge painfully gained from captured alien tech. The makeshift command center came into view, an operations tent erected amidst the wreckage. Officers and engineers turned to salute their president as Chandra entered. She returned their resolute gestures with a nod, as long as humanity retained its courage and flexibility, they would overcome any challenge. Madam President, we have an urgent update, reported her intelligence chief, General Akiro Mbesa. His uniform still bore stains from the battle in orbit days earlier. Chandra felt her chest tighten. What is it, General? Had the invaders returned for another assault so soon? Something unusual is happening in the enemy fleet, Mbasa said, pointing to radar maps showing clusters of red dots in high orbit. They appeared to be marshalling for renewed attacks, but now the ships are changing position erratically and breaking formation, almost as if, as if they are under attack, Chandra finished, eyes widening. 
But who could be engaging the enemy now when Earth's own orbital defenses laid in ruins? A dozen possibilities raced through her mind. Get me a secure comm link to our lunar recon base immediately, Chandra ordered. Those astronauts manning the stealth observation post on the moon's far side might be able to shed some light on the puzzling alien fleet movements. As her engineers worked to boost the encrypted signal, Chandra tried to calm her thoughts. Whatever was transpiring in orbit, it was an unexpected opportunity. With the enemy fleet distracted and disrupted, now was the perfect time to accelerate construction of the top-secret Antares Rift Fleet. Designed using knowledge from captured alien vessels, these warp-capable cruisers represented humanity's best hope to take the fight to the invaders. Chandra observed with satisfaction through the viewport as swarms of workers welded together the sleek titanium tungsten hulls of the most advanced warships Earth had ever produced. Soon they would launch and carry the torch of humanity's indomitable spirit to the very heart of the enemy's domain. Chandra silently repeated the mantra she had crafted over years of leading humanity through crisis after crisis. Where there is life, there is hope. Where there is hope, we will prevail. Zoranth's hatred simmered as he observed flickering holograms of the battered alliance ships struggling to reform their blockade over Earth. The insolent human leader Chandra had broadcast another morale-boosting speech, falsely claiming victory after their escape from annihilation. She thinks she's won, Zorinth growled to his new second-in-command, Commander Zorlak. His previous lieutenant had been discharged out the airlock for failures. We will teach her the cost of such arrogance. Zorlak's tentacles flexed uncertainly. But sir, our fleets are at barely half strength. The humans knew photon vortex cannons. Are no match for what we have in store for them, Zorinth interrupted, entering commands into the still functional consoles. You will see. The computer displayed diagrammatic holograms of the micro-singularity warheads now being loaded onto all ships in the fleet. Originally developed to counter the radical Naru rebels, these weapons could destabilize planetary crusts and burn through any known shielding via focused quantum foam detonations. Zorinth curled a tentacle triumphantly. Humanity's end was near, but Zorlak seemed unconvinced. Targeting multiple dense population centers may turn galactic sympathies against us. The Council explicitly prohibited Zorinth backhanded him across his ocular shafts, sending the subordinate sprawling. Do not dare question me again, he roared. I was leading fleets to victory while you still clung to your brood mother's teat, and I care nothing for the Council's platitudes. He moved to stand over Zorlak, blaster aimed directly between the prone commander's eye stalks. The Council refused to act decisively and so the human pestilence has spread unchecked. Now we end it, whatever the cost. Zorlak lowered his gaze. Yes, Commander, it will be done. Satisfied with this obeisance, Zorinth holstered his weapon and stepped back. He activated the quantum communicator, hailed the waiting fleet, and gave the fateful order to commence Operation Annihilation. The time had come. At long last, humanity would be purged from the galaxy, never to arise again. And Zorinth's disgrace would be wiped clean in the ensuing victory and plunder. He silently repeated the old invader's oath he had first sworn as a young recruit, words now etched deeply into his hearts. Show no mercy, leave no survivors. Alarms blared across the globe as the first micro-singularities ruptured through Earth's atmosphere. The quantum foam warheads scattered high-density subatomic particles in their wake, which destabilized the planet's electromagnetic field. President Chandra watched in horror from Houston Command as black storm clouds boiled across the skies, signaling the start of the apocalyptic bombardment. This was no ordinary attack. 
The aliens were unleashing doomsday-level weaponry in violation of all interstellar accords. General Mbesa gripped his console, knuckles pale. Multiple singularities converging above megapopulation sectors across Asia and Europe. Impact projected within minutes. The bunkers and citadels Chandra had assured her people would protect them now seemed appallingly fragile before this planet-cracking onslaught. She steeled herself against the urge to panic or despair. Activate emergency field reinforcements. All regions commence immediate evacuation protocols. Around the world, kinetic barriers hum to life over humanity's greatest refuge cities, while subterranean blast doors rumbled shut. It would only provide temporary shelter, but it was all they had. The deck heaved as the first micro-singularities struck home with the force of nuclear explosions. Outside the view screens, the sky boiled with unnatural storms as more Armageddon bringers followed, but light still remained. From beneath the waves emerged the vanguard of the Antares Rift fleet, ion cannons blazing. The beleaguered alien armada detonated in spectacular fashion under the unexpected human onslaught. Chandra allowed herself a grim smile as the last invader ships vanished from the radar screens. The Alliance had played its ultimate hand and been thwarted once again. Now, it was humanity's turn to deal the final blow. She opened a channel to the eagerly waiting Rift Fleet, floating serenely above the devastation. All ships are in position for the counterattack, Madame President, reported Admiral Raya Khan. Her crew looked haggard but determined, having narrowly survived the surface calamity themselves to rendezvous here. Chandra gave the order she had been waiting her whole presidency to speak. For Earth, for our future, all ships engage. Like arrows of justice, the fearsome cruisers leaped forward into the ether. They were headed directly for the enemy's heart. Zorinth watched the battle unfold with mounting fury from his lunar command post. The audacious humans had unveiled some secret fleet just as victory was within his grasp. How was this possible? My lord, the micro-singularities succeeded in penetrating Earth's surface defenses, but significant human elements and bunkers appear to have survived, reported Commander Zorlak nervously. Zoranth backhanded him in disgust. I can see that, fool. Now their counterattack threatens to undo everything. He studied the holographic projections intently. The remnants of the Alliance fleet were being systematically obliterated by the humans' new cruisers in high orbit over Earth. In desperation, he opened communications. All ships, this is Commander Zorinth. You must halt their advance at all costs. Unleash the entire arsenal. From the remaining Alliance dreadnoughts came white-hot torrents of plasma and micro-singularities, enough concentrated firepower to crack a planet's crust. But the human cruisers, clearly incorporating captured alien technology, slipped lively around the barrage using some advanced refractive shielding. Their return fire was mercilessly precise. Zorinth slammed a fist into his console as the Allied lines collapsed completely into a disorganized rout. In a matter of minutes, the once invincible armada had been reduced to sparking debris fields by the upstart humans. His great vision of conquest laid now in ruins. Only one dishonorable option remained. Zoranth activated the lunar base's self-destruct sequence, then sprinted for the shuttle bay silently cursing his failed ambition. If he could not defeat humanity, he would flee to the darkest corners of the galaxy to gather his strength anew. Emergency klaxons wailed as Zorinth's shuttle lifted off, the base erupting in flame behind him. He refused to look back, refused to accept the magnitude of this defeat. His three hearts pounded with impotent rage. As the shuttle broke orbit, the glimmering blue orb of Earth came into view. The planet was ravaged but defiant, its flag still flying proudly amidst the smoke of conflict. And now, the human fleet turned their sights to his fleeing shuttle. 
In less desperate times, Zorinth might have stood nobly against the inevitable, meeting his fate with head held high. But now in this moment of abject defeat, with ruin and humiliation crashing down upon his dreams, the proud commander's nerve faltered. Zorinth clasped the shuttle controls, veins pumping with terror. Abandoning all dignity and discipline, he desperately tried to steer his fragile craft away from the human cruisers, now closing relentlessly to finish their quarry. No, no, I beg you, no. The last thing Zorinth saw was a blaze of silver light blossoming from the rift's main cannon. Then oblivion took him into its cold embrace. In the aftermath, with debris and warships scattered across the solar system, President Chandra broadcast a message rallying humanity's bloodied but unbowed spirit. Though Earth was ravaged, they had survived the aliens' genocidal fury. Now was the time for rebuilding, to honor the fallen by creating a greater future in the stars. Though wars and trials lay ahead, this victory proved that so long as humanity retained its indomitable will to survive, no power in this galaxy could extinguish them. United and courageous, humans would always rise again stronger.